Welcome here to Talk at CB, and welcome to El Clasico. We're on Sunday at the Santiago Bernabeu. Xavi Hernandez and Carlo Angelotti will do battle as Barca face Real Madrid. We're going to be talking today about the tactical battle that we have ahead of us, about the big changes that Xavi must make, that Xavi is under pressure to make right now, as Barca have been handed a significant boost to their defensive line. We're going to be talking all about the game, because this is the big one, and it really, really matters. Let's do this. But first, before all of the tactics... Let me just start by talking about Sergio Busquets. Because when he came out to talk immediately after our disappointment in midweek against Inter, we as fans knew that we had a Classico just around the corner. We were looking for inspiration. We were looking for strength. I'm sure his teammates were looking for the same. And ultimately, we wanted to see some words of leadership and ownership from our captain. And after the Inter game... What did Busquets say? He said it's clear that this result will affect us in El Clasico. Is that a joke? Is that genuinely how you feel right now? Because for that quote right there, and I genuinely mean this, guys, you should be dropped on the spot. If that thought is even entering your mind, let alone saying it publicly, don't even bother playing in El Clasico. Don't even bother travelling to Madrid. And that goes for any other player who feels that way. Because then you look at Rafinha, somebody who we spoke about yesterday, we felt was harshly treated against Inter, once again taken off after a really spirited performance from him. What did he say ahead of this game? He was asked about El Clasico. He was asked about Real Madrid. He said, we're the leaders. He said, if there's any team that should be careful... It's them talking about Real Madrid. And that, that's how you speak. That's the message that you send out. Ahead of a game like this, you stand up, you be confident, you believe in yourself. And ultimately, you show everyone that you're going to take this game by storm. That no matter what has happened before it, no matter what disappointments that we've had, do not let your head drop. And if you're not ready to play, if you're not ready to do that, then like I say... Don't even bother. But indeed, with that out of the way, ahead of the big game on Sunday, Chaffee has been given the enormous news and an enormous boost to his back line. Kunde's back. On Thursday there, he returned to full training with the group. He is going to be ready to face Real Madrid and he is expected to go straight back in to the starting lineup. But of course, the big question now is, looking at our back line, looking at the injuries that we have, Kunde coming back in, does he replace Pique at centre-back, or does he replace Sergi Roberto at right-back? Kunde, of course, can play very well in both positions, so who should he replace? Now, for me, if I was Chavi, it has to be Pique. And admittedly, this is not an ideal scenario. You know, ideally, we'd have Kunde and Araujo, and then we'd actually take them both out of the lineup. But I just think if you had to pick one... Pique just looks so far off it right now. You look at that second half against Inter, and at times, genuinely, I don't even know if he's fit. I don't even know if he can keep up with play, and especially here, just a few days later, another massive game. He's not ready for that. We cannot play Pique at the heart of our defence. Let's put Kunde in there, in his best, most natural position, and he will be an enormous boost. However... In keeping Sergio Roberto in the team and actually leaving him at right back, this is the situation that you now have. You have Vinicius Jr. up against, directly up against, Sergio Roberto. Now, that is not the stuff of dreams, especially heading into a game where Vinicius now, he is Real Madrid's most dangerous player. He will run in behind you. He will stay out wide. He can make inverted runs as well. Combining, of course, there with, of course, Karim Benzema. That is Real Madrid's attack right there. You do not really want to be matching him up with Sergio Roberto. So, obviously, we will need to help him. Now, Kunde coming in, as I expect to be, the right-sided centre-back. What that does mean already is that he can go out to help, just because he's not 
playing as a right back doesn't mean there that he can't go out and support Roberto there in sort of two on one situations but what I would also like to highlight here is the right winger from Barcelona because this of course is going to be Furlong Mendy there for Real Madrid we know that Real Madrid would like to overload this side that those two combine very very well that's a lot of pace on the left hand side and again you will need ways to deal with that now for me I would trust on the right side Rafinha much more than Dembele in this game because of Rafinha's defensive output. He is somebody who we saw it against it, we've seen it plenty of times at Barca, he will work incredibly hard on that side. So if there's a situation here where Real Madrid are doubling up, where they're putting real pressure on a side that is not our strongest side right now with Roberto, Rafinha can and will help out defensively. But it's actually more than that too because I think it's very, very interesting against Inter guys when you're looking at Roberto the kind of positions that he was taking up because he was often making here with Rafinha on this side he was making very inverted runs very advanced runs and he was often operating in this sort of area and that's interesting because in previous Classicos we have seen Roberto actually come alive now it's a big big ask and we're asking a lot of him here I'm asking a lot of him but can he recreate some of those big Classico moments? Is he able here to find a big performance on that right side, link up with Rafinha, actually force Vinicius to do a bit of defensive work, actually force him back and maybe look over his shoulder a bit more? And then, of course, like I say, when Roberto goes forward, we now have the luxury of Kunde being able to step out here with a lot more ease and be a lot more comfortable in that area. What is interesting then is when we switch over to the left side of Barca, that is another massive question for Xavi because obviously it's going to be Eric Garcia here alongside Kunde at centre-back. Two players there who are very, very comfortable on the ball. They will, of course, have to deal with the threat of Karim Benzema. But on the left side... Who is that going to be? Because for me, if that's Alonso alongside Eric there on the left side of our defence, that doesn't fill me with confidence. I think we need pace there. We need somebody here to deal with the threat. On the right, let's not forget, Fede Valverde. Because he's going to be playing here in that unorthodox sort of role. He's not, you know, a natural right winger. He's not going to just stand out wide. He's going to make inside runs. He's going to operate in the space here. And I think to match up with Valverde, what we need is Alejandro Balde. We need to actually put the faith in him. Put trust in him for this game and that is a back line here that I would feel a lot more comfortable with than I was against Inter. Yes, we have Roberto up against Vinicius, which is not ideal, but you help him out. You've got Benzema here, marshalled by Kunde and Eric. You've got Ter Stegen and then Balde matching the pace of Valverde, but I think it actually goes further than that too. In terms of our defensive line, you know, operating against Real Madrid here, I think what's so, so important for me is, like I say, Busquets should be dropped. There's no two ways about that. Not just for his words, but also for his performance against Inter. Why not have Frankie de Jong in this area here? Because what Frankie could give you defensively against this Real Madrid team who love to counter, who really like to operate here, especially when Barca are going forward, they will look to break very, very quickly here, operate in all the spaces. You would like to have somebody in that area who can cover that space, who can actually get around the pitch. Good mobility there from Frankie de Jong. He could help out there, out to the right-hand side, offering more support there, defending against Vinicius. He could match the runs of Fede Valverde there, even if he's coming in field. De Jong there can match up against him. But I also think here, when you're coming up against that midfield here from Real Madrid, you've got Tony Kroos, you've got Modric. We all know about their quality, their longevity. But I think having a midfield of Frankie, of Pedri, of Gavi, the youthfulness about that midfield, the energy, the intensity that we could bring with that midfield, we could find ways through Real Madrid. We could make runs here in beyond them and really attack that midfield trio of Real Madrid with this dynamic duo. I mean, you look at the characteristics of the midfield. I think this is a game that will suit Gavi more. I think his intensity and actually closing down, pressing Real Madrid and forcing them into mistakes, it'll be much more useful in a game like this and then supported by Pedri. He could, of course, come across to the left. Gavi could go over to the right if needed and De Jong at the base of it. I like how that looks. I like the quality that that midfield has from Barca. And I just think in a game like this, a game that will be dramatically different to the one that we played against. There may be times in this game where Real Madrid do have possession of the ball, where Real Madrid, as you can see here, will step up really, really high in the field and actually 
there will be space. There will be opportunities here to go in behind them. And that's why a lot of people will say, you know, we need Busquets in a Chavi team. Chavi can't play without Busquets. But let's not forget, guys, Chavi also likes to transition quickly. He loves there to turn over balls, win back possession here. Somebody like Gavi closing down, forcing a mistake. And then think about De Jong, the bursting runs that he can make forward, the way that he can actually open up passing lanes there by driving into space. There's nobody who can transition from defence to attack from midfield quite like he can. And if you could have De Jong there bursting forward and then looking for runs of Dembele into that space, of Rafinha into that space, using those players a lot more and having opportunities to go in behind, we have to use the players that we have. We have to use the best of what we've got. And that's it right now. It's a midfield trio there that has dynamism. It's an attacking trio there that has pace, that has quality in the final third for Barca. And it's about ultimately doing the best with what we have at the back, given the injuries that we've received. And I think one more thing that I would really look to highlight as well ahead of this game is all down to Real Madrid's goalkeeper because they are going to be without Thibaut Courtois in the Classico. Now, that is massive for them. That is a huge, huge loss there. The importance that he has there in goal for Real Madrid, it is absolutely enormous. And I just think we've got to put pressure on Lunin. We saw it in midweek against Inter, whereby Rafinha, he was having a go on goal. He was having shots here from range. Even Pedri, even Gavi, even Frankie can do that, of course. We've got to do it. We put pressure on Onana and he started to spill things. He started there to feel as though he was having a lot of shots raining down on him. And Lewandowski too, Dembele, these are all players who can shoot from range, who can put pressure on goalkeepers. And we have to do that against Lunin because you never know what you're going to get out of it. You never know if it's going to be a deflection. You never know if he's going to spill it there. And of course, Lewandowski, he's going to be there to pick up the pieces. We all know that. So come on, let's go into this game with fire, with fury, with energy and belief. But it all comes down to Chaffee and whether he can give this team freedom by the selections that he makes. Let's go and give it everything. Let's put it all on the line. And now is the time to say... Let's go for it. And so that there, guys, are some of the aspects that we can expect from El Clasico on Sunday. No doubt about it, it is going to be a tough game for Barca. We are going to be tested in all areas of the field. But we can't forget that we have quality. We can't forget what we have shown this season. We are able to compete and we can only hope that we do that at the Bernabeu. Please do let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. How do you see the game going? What sort of tactics do you see coming from Xavi and indeed from Angelotti? I will see you, of course, on Saturday as the build-up continues for the big one. Thanks for your support, guys. And for all of you today getting involved, I will see you very, very soon. But until next time, as always, Vizca. Yeah, I'll bust